Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, and thanks for joining me today. A question came up during a strategy call today, and I thought I would use that as my topic of discussion here in this episode. And the question was around the recording of a memoir. And the question at hand was about whether the author should narrate the memoir or whether he should have a professional narrator do it. So I'm going to go over some of those considerations. This is a topic I've covered in some earlier episodes, so you may want to also take a listen to some of those episodes if this is a topic of particular interest. The questions revolved mostly around what would be our criteria for making a recommendation one way or the other. As always, when we first meet a new client, Our first questions are around their goals. What are they trying to accomplish, not only with their audiobook, but also with their work in general? And this is a case where my recommendation really leaned into that part of the conversation. The criteria that we'll talk about really fall into initially two large buckets. The first is audio quality and that is a technical side of things, whether you can get a good high-quality sound using whatever mic is going to be used in whatever space is going to be used, and that also has some factoring in regarding, you know, things like external noises that may be around, you know, are you living near an airport? Do you have a lot of leaf blowers in the area? Things like that. It can also be more in the area of the person who is doing the narrating. Do they have a lot of mouth sounds, for example, a lot of noisy stuff like this, that kind of stuff that can often land within words and make a real headache out of the editing process. So the first is really predominantly around the audio quality that is mostly a factor of microphone and space and elements of space that I identified. The other sort of larger bucket that they go into is the storytelling quality. And here I'm referring to the author's skills as a narrator. Remember that most authors do not have those skills developed, and it's not the same as just sitting and talking into a microphone. That is the perception, perhaps, for many people of what voiceover or audiobook production is about, but there is so much more to it. And just to mention a couple things, one is being able to deliver a consistent quality over a long period of time. And that is something that even many voiceover actors who do commercials, their skills do not necessarily translate over to audiobook narration. Okay, let's start poking around in some of these two buckets and go a little bit deeper. In the first bucket, when we're talking about audio quality, these issues can be resolved in a number of different ways. So one would be recording in a professional studio that's local to the author. With that scenario, you're likely going to get a good 
quality audio. But I say likely because there are studios that really are not that adept at what they're doing. Maybe they're just new to it or they only do music or any number of other things. Their skills just aren't quite as high as they need to be. In any case, most of the time, you're going to get a good quality audio if you go to a studio. When you do that, you typically would get a technician that goes with that studio rental. The alternative is to set up a home studio. That could be in your home, your office, whatever, someplace that is quiet and will be conducive to the recording process. For the author that I was speaking with today, because he had expressed that some of his goals are around creating more content on an ongoing basis, and that he would like that content to be in audio, and that he also expressed a great interest in being a guest on podcasts. And so for those reasons, it makes more sense to suggest that he create a home studio setup. This is, of course, before we go poke around in the other bucket, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But just based on his goals, it would make sense for him to have a good studio setup at home. And so if we're just looking at this bucket, then my recommendation would be to go ahead and get that home studio set up so that it will be available for all of those things that he wants to do. Let's take just a short pause. We'll come right back and we'll talk about the other bucket. Getting your memoir into audio can be a delicate process, best treated with a nurturing and supportive approach. Many authors assume that when a memoir is recorded, it needs to be in the author's voice. And while sometimes that is best, it is not always the best option. At Pro Audio Voices, we'll work through that decision with you and support you in the production process whichever way you choose. If you decide to narrate, we set you up for success with a range of options. From having an audio engineer and director on the line for every recording session, to getting you properly set up for recording on your own. If we hire a professional narrator, we'll make sure the voice is the right fit for you and your memoir. At Pro Audio Voices, your story is important to us. Let's inspire the world together. Okay, let's take a look in the other bucket, and that's the one around storytelling quality. What exactly do I mean by that? I'll talk about some of these qualities, but really, great storytelling is something that is hard to actually define. Perhaps the most useful definition is that the story stays engaging, that the storytelling engages the audience and keeps them wanting to listen. I've listened to at least the first part of many audiobooks that were okay, but they're not really engaging enough to keep me with them. And I've listened to certainly hundreds of samples, like retail samples of audiobooks, and can tell very quickly, it's like, no, 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 I don't want to listen to that you know, that voice trying to tell me a story, reading the words, which is the way that poor storytelling can come across. In cases like that, I'd rather get the print book and just read it myself. As I described to this author today, some of the qualities that I listen for are whether it sounds like the author narrator is personally engaged with the story, if they're inside of it, if they're telling it in a conversational way, the way we would tell the story of how our day went or the, any other story. We live in story. We are story. And we're all telling stories all the time. But many times when people start to read a text, that can start to become very stilted. Some of that can depend very much on the actual writing, the text itself. Some text 
isn't that well written, especially when we're trying to translate it into audio. Other text can just flow beautifully when you're reading it aloud. Another thing that we're listening for is some kind of modulation. And this is a tricky one because if someone is delivering in a very monotone style and you ask them to modulate their voice a little bit more, it's going to sound deliberately modulated and awkward and unrealistic and not conversational at all. So it's a quality that we're listening for, but it's not something that is easily adjusted. Another quality is phrasing. Is the person who is narrating making sense of the phrases? Are they crafting the story segment by segment, sentence fragment by sentence fragment, so that it is conversational, so that it makes sense, so that the emphases are in the right places. All of these things put together, when you're evaluating a voice, it's easy enough to identify and listen for each of those different elements. But it is much trickier to try to ask someone to change a particular thing within that list that I just gave you in the hopes of getting a good storytelling quality as a result. So this is where having a director can be really helpful. And this is something that we do at Pro Audio Voices. If we have an author narrator, we do get them started with a director. And whether they continue on with the director throughout is a variable that's up to the client. But uh, it does help our authors get off you know, started off on the right foot and to provide them with some tools that they can use to stay on track as they progress through their audiobook narration. So there are a few things that can be done if the storytelling quality is not quite up to snuff or if you're not certain whether you as author should be narrating your own book. Here are some things that may be helpful. One is, as I said just right before this, is uh, have a director. Director can be very helpful. In terms of making the decision, you may want to work with a director and then listen to your audio and see how you're doing with it. You can also do a comparison. Have a professional narrator do a short segment, and then you do that same short segment and listen and compare. And recognizing that it is a very subjective decision to be made, I would recommend that you have some other people listen to the narration, to your work, and if you have a comparison, to someone else's. Just get some feedback. You can go with what they say or not, and you may have completely opposite responses from different people. So it's just to gather some input for you in making your decision. If you need any help with that or are trying to decide whether you or someone else should narrate your memoir, if you have questions, please reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com. Book a discovery call and let's talk about it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.